Well, hello and welcome to another amazing guest interview here on the Profit with Law podcast. I'm your host, Moshe Amsel, and today this is going to be a meta episode, right? Because we're going to be talking about podcasting on this podcast, which is incredible. Um, I'm really excited because we have a lot of marketing discussions on this show, uh, and they almost always talk about website. LSAs, PPC, SEO, and that's it. And maybe we've had a peppering of maybe TV, um, billboards, but there, I mean, this is my marketing platform. The Profit With Law podcast, you come here, you listen to me talking to experts, you hear my expertise. Hopefully at some point you say, hey, maybe Moshe can help me with my problem. You go to ProfitWithLaw.com and you look and you say, oh, look at that. I can talk to somebody on the team uh, for a free information session and I can unload my problems and they're going to solve it for me, which by the way, you should go and check out and do that if uh, you are at a juncture where you feel like, hey, I need help in growing my firm. But uh, podcasting is an unbelievable medium. And the reason why it's unbelievable is because there's no better relationship that you can have with somebody than where they keep coming back for more. And um, it, it's to the to the point where some of you who are listening to this show feel like you're my friend. Like we've been buddies. We've been hanging out for a while. I mean, we've gone for runs together. We've done carpool together. Maybe we've even showered together. So the, there's it, there's something really intimate about the podcast medium, and it's more than video. Like this is being recorded on video as well, and it's going to be on our YouTube channel, right? Um, so podcasting kind of gets thrown around, and it's also video now on YouTube. But people are not watching a video when they're doing other things. They're listening to audio when they're doing other things. So you become the background noise for somebody's productive moments and other facets of their life but also uh, bringing uh, great expertise in that process. So I'm excited to have Tracy DeForge today. Uh, she is the founder and CEO of Produce Your Podcast uh, with over three decades of ex expertise in broadcast media, executive management, a Fortune 500 business consulting, uh, a premier podcast consulting and production agency that incorporates podcasts into the digital marketing strategy of business to business and business to consumer companies with a diverse career spanning startups to Fortune 500 giants like Google and Hilton. She's renowned for business development insights that drive innovation. As CEO of Ladies Who Launch, Tracy pioneered the franchise media model supporting women-owned businesses. An international podcast expert and speaker, she co-founded the Podcast Professionals Association. Tracy also co-hosts the popular Ask Ask Brian. Oh, it's radio Brian. show. <laughs> Ask Brian. Oh, it's spelled wrong. Ask Brian radio show in Los Angeles, recognized by CNN, CTV, and American Express. Open. Tracy is a proud member of the Rolling Stone Culture Council. Tracy, welcome to the show. Thank you. What a great introduction. And, you know, it's funny when we do the live radio show for Ask Brian, it is spelled B-R-I-E-N. And we open every show explaining why it's spelled with an E. And so it's so funny to have someone introduce it and say it's spelled wrong. So we counter that like every time we do the show. And so anyway, not relevant to today's conversation, but funny nonetheless. Not so. spelled wrong, pronounced Brian and um, made me stumble on my words, which my team should have picked up on. Folks, you do a pre-call for a reason. You put notes in there for me. So, you know what? Your team was great. <laughs> I participated in that pre-call and she was wonderful, but who wouldn't, who, who, you just don't really ever think it's spelled that way. So no right. worries. But let me just say that we don't even really need to have this episode because everything that you said about podcasting is everything that we preach, teach, and tell. And I just wanted to say how refreshing it is to hear from someone who is successfully podcasting really validate all the reasons why podcasting is such an efficient marketing strategy for businesses. And it's just so music to my ears to hear you saying how it's working for you. And thank you for that. And I'm excited to really dig into that with you today. You know, I started listening to podcasts when I needed to download it onto my computer using the iTunes application 
and then connect my iPod and sync it with the computer in order to listen to it on the go. Um, yep. There was a time before smartphones that we had podcasts and it was very difficult to like, like there was a process to get a podcast to listen to. And the, the listenership was much smaller, but still was a very, very successful medium of marketing. Um, and now it's everywhere and it's accessible to everybody. And there isn't a place that you can be where you don't have access to, to a podcast. Um, so it's come a long way. And, but, but I still think it has not reached critical mass and I still think there's opportunity. And I still think that, um, you know, there, there's, there's a lot of, there are professionals who go and, and they get a spot on a live radio show, right? Um, this is a way of creating your own seat on your own yes. live radio show. And, yes. you know, and, and it, it, it's going to get people listening to it. And those people can potentially be customers or it could be something that has nothing to do with business. I've been wanting for the longest time to start a podcast um, that, um, and I, I've been playing around with the name for it, but I was going to call it um, a letter to my daughter. And basically oh, every okay. episode, every episode would just be like something that I want to impart to my child. Um, now I have seven kids. So, and now I have three boys. So at the time that I was thinking about this, I didn't even have any sons. It was just girls. Um, so that's why it would be a letter to my daughter. So now I'm like really torn, like, okay, now what do I, what do I call it? But um, it, it's one of those things that's like simmering. Like I don't have a business reason to do it, but I feel like it, it's something that people can gain from and and get and get value from and potentially learn from and and or use as a teaching tool, uh, it, you know, in in the right moment. So, um, you know, it doesn't have to be business related. It could be it could be something that you do as a hobby. But let's focus today on the business side of it because law firm owners want to know. How do I get the phone to ring? And we're tired of spending thousands and thousands of dollars every month on, on digital marketers who are paying money to Google and LinkedIn and Facebook, Meta. Uh, I, I, want, I want something different. So lay the groundwork for me. I actually usually start with asking you to just tell us about yourself, but feel free to throw that story in if you want to. But lay the groundwork yeah. for me of how should a law firm think about podcasting as a potential medium for marketing their, their brand? Yeah, I think that's such a great question. And what I would start out with is that, and it was interesting when you mentioned this in your story yourself about how the other guests that you've had on the show talk about the, you know, pay per click and the SEO and all of these things. But if you think about podcasting as a first and foremost, as a content generation tool, the interesting thing about what you're saying is that it is where, if you think about a, a tire and, and a hub with spokes, if you think about the podcast as the originator of your content creation strategy, then building visibility, generating thought leadership and subject matter expertise, all of that can start with the podcast, the podcast can be the hub of your marketing strategy. And what I mean by that is right now we're creating content together. We're, sh we're showing up, we're talking about each other's um, benefits and, and sharing our expertise. And we're having a really great conversation and it's fun. But then afterwards, your, your team that you mentioned so fondly, like they can take this podcast episode, it can be transcribed, it can be turned into a blog post, that blog post can then be edited into different um, pre written social media posts, it can be created into a LinkedIn newsletter. It is so incredibly efficient to step up to the mic, record the content one time, and then have it be part of your workflow so that you don't have to think about it again. And each episode can create multiple different pieces of content, not to mention that you would want to be then uploading it to your website, having it shared on there with what we call show notes, which have hyperlinked resources and things like that, which are really great for SEO. So you're able to accomplish all of these different markers of different milestones of content generation with creating this episode one time. So I think from an efficiency perspective, 
it's all about changing that perspective of if I start with this one piece of content, then what? And then those possibilities are really endless. Uh, yeah, Tracy, I'm glad that I'm, I'm glad that you that you shared that you shared all of that because I, I think and I'm just going to share this with with our listeners in case you didn't know. I'm sure I, I should hope that you know we're doing this, but this particular episode, it's going to go out and, and be hosted in, in audio format on all the podcast players out there. But the video version of this conversation is going to go on YouTube. It is also going to be shared on Facebook on our business page. My team behind the scenes is going to do a number of things with the episode we record today. They're going to write a blog post that captures the the key points of this conversation. So if anybody ever wants to like really get the lowdown on what we discussed and what's covered and you know all the information, you can simply go to profitwithlaw.com. Every one of our 400 plus episodes has a blog post attached to it what, that gives you all the information plus the resources uh, that are mentioned. So lots of links to great books and great other show episodes and other vendors that have been ho- you know guests on our show and and have really great services that, that that potentially can can be something that you use. Then my team is creating graphic images with quotes from the show. They're also taking snippets of video and creating shorts and reels that we're sharing on Instagram, that we're sharing on YouTube shorts. Um, And by the way, YouTube shorts are getting a lot of attention from YouTube. So we, when we post a video, yes. Yeah. We being able to create them like, Mm -hmm. yeah. When we post a long form video on YouTube, and we're we're we just started our YouTube channel in March, so we don't have a huge audience, right? So when we post a long form video on YouTube, YouTube goes and 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 alerts people who are subscribed to our channel, and they put it out there. We get somewhere between maybe twenty to fifty views of that video in the first week that we put it out. We put out a short on YouTube, and within twenty four to forty eight hours, we have well over three hundred views. And that's because YouTube wants people to consume shorts because they believe that people's attention spans are really short and and they're, they just want that quick hit. And then they want to jump to the next thing. And YouTube wants to keep feeding them the next thing. So YouTube recommends the next short for them to watch. So YouTube is watching the behavior of people who are watching our stuff and saying, okay, this person mimics this person. So let's 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 feed them this piece of this piece of content. So people who may have never listened to this podcast may have never been on our YouTube channel, might see our, our short that we do, and they might say, wow, that was really cool. Let me check out other stuff they have. Boom, they're click over to our channel, and now they're delving into our stuff. And now they're, you know, there's we've captured somebody's eyeballs and ears that we didn't have before. Um, all of this is coming from recording a podcast. Yes. The time that we spend together, not only again, are we exchanging information and sharing each other's expertise, but we're also creating a foundational piece for multiple pieces of content. I love what you said about the shorts too. And I want to expound on that in terms of that we get a lot of questions that produce your podcast. Should I have audio and video? Should I only release audio? Should I only release video? And your strategy is very smart in that you record in audio and video, you release the video full uh, long form and short form, what we have found as a successful strategy is that there are a lot of times where people might see the short form and they might have a one or two minutes to look at the short form. And then that ultimately leads them to want to convert back to watch the long form. So we are big advocates of the short form and the long form. And that also works well in audio too. And let me explain why. So with audio, for example, we are, you're going to be releasing this as a full audio episode. The length is going to be what it's going to be. And when you're, when people are scrolling through the feed, and they see, you know, 25 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, they may not be feel like they're committed for that amount of time. But if you also release shorter audio versions, so the same strategy applies, like you were saying, clipping this video for shorts, you can also integrate into your podcast a special segment or ask for specific takeaway action items, things like that. You can repurpose the audio version in a shorter form as well on your RSS feed. And you can have the same success with people going through and they say, oh, this one's only three minutes, four minutes. I'm going to sample it here. And then they like what they hear. And then they 
sample the longer form audio too. So that strategy actually is a dual strategy for both audio only podcasts and audio and video podcasts. I I love that idea and we're always looking for for more ways to to grow our show. I love that idea of creating that short abridged version of the episode and I'd have to kick around with the team like what's the easiest way for us to do that? Is it just, you know, editing some of the audio down? Uh is it somebody else on the team recording their own summary of the show, uh which I I think would be really cool. Um but I like I like that idea a lot of of putting it in there. And I also like it because we have, you know, we have sponsorships that we sell and that could be a huge value add to, to the sponsors to say, hey, when you sponsor, you also get tacked onto these really short summary versions. So even when somebody's going in and getting the quick three minute hit or five minute hit instead of the 40 minute show. They're going to they're going to hear you um, both on the on the beginning and at the end of the of the show. So um, I really like that. Um, let's uh, there are some things I want to cover. And, and we're you know, it, even though it's going to be a 40 minute recording, we we are, really don't have a lot of time. So I want to make sure we cover them. Let's start first with the basics, sure. like a law firm owner thinking about podcasting as a medium. They might be thinking that they need to have a podcast that talks about their area of law. Now, that would be quite boring to me as a consumer, right? So it depends if they're B2B, then maybe it's interesting, right? But but B2C, I don't know that anybody's going to be subscribing to a podcast that talks about how to maximize your your payout from a from an auto accident or, you know, how to navigate the criminal justice system. So how should a law firm owner think about podcasting? What is the right strategy to approach this to use if, if the purpose of the show is to grow the brand of the firm and to when people need legal services that we offer that they're thinking of us first? Absolutely. So when we begin to work with a client, what especially a client who's just starting out, doesn't have a podcast, that's a really a perfect place to begin conceptually with a blank canvas of, of the idea to create a show. You mentioned the intimacy connection, especially in audio between the listener and the host. And that is a very powerful relationship that you're building. So the first thing that you need to think about is what's in it for them. Because if the listener is not getting value from the content that's being presented, then they're not going to come back and they're not going to share it with their friends and the engagement's not going to grow. We work with clients uh, in this, what we call discovery phase to build out a show that focuses on both education and entertainment. We merge that and call it edutainment and with, with a very specific focus on what's in it for the listener. Uh, a lot of that's involved in like thinking who is your target customer, how are they going to listen, and also bringing in the personality of the host. Like it's very important for if you're going to be the person who's hosting the show, you've got to be talking about something that not only are you comfortable in terms of your level of expertise, but that you feel energetically connected to so that you stay vibrant and you stay energetic while you're delivering this content. In terms of the actual build out of the content itself, no one wants an av you know an avatorial or an infomercial. They want to be entertained while they're learning. And so we will create scenarios where we can bring the content forward, but in a way that perhaps is inviting and enticing. So a couple of things that come to mind as examples. Uh, there's a, a an a divorce podcast that we produce, uh, The Amicable Divorce Expert. It's all about focusing on keeping a divorce amicable. So it provides them so much opportunity to talk about relationships. Um, how, if you're divorcing a narcissist, co-parenting, all of the things that really impact you, it's not about the law of the divorce and how are the assets separated. It's all about how does the divorce impact the family? How does it impact the person who's going through it? And we even added in for that entertainment value, we added in celebrity divorces. So when there was a big highlighted celebrity divorce, Angelina and Brad, or you know, 
name one, right? They happen frequently, unfortunately. Right. Then bringing in that celebrity divorce component in a way that's breaking down, you know, people are seeing what's in the press, but then having the expertise and the knowledge to break down what's going on behind the scenes and applying it to what could be happening in your world. The other thing is designed to make sure that you might not be the person going through the divorce, but your sister or your mother or your someone at work. And so you want to create what used to be called the water cooler moments. Now I call them the zoom moments. People want to feel lighter and smarter after they engage in, in consuming your content. So you want to be sure you have these places within your podcast that you have these nuggets of information that the next time they get off this zoom call and jump on another zoom call, like I said, used to be gathering around the water cooler doesn't happen as much anymore, but they want to be able to share something that makes them feel like they are smarter or they have left the experience of consuming your content, feeling lighter and feeling better. So that's another important thing to take into consideration. And just for a fun brainstorming. So one of the most popular genres of podcasting that people listen to right now is true crime. So if you are an attorney who, and we're just brainstorming right now, but if you're an attorney who is in the field where that might be appropriate, then you could be bringing in true crime stories that are people are just obsessed with right now and then either doing it as an analysis of this of and being able to you know layer in your subject matter expertise on top of a real true crime story there's a way to build a podcast around that and then even one of our uh podcasts in our portfolio is an injury lawyer and so you're like well how in the world could you make injury lawyer podcasts to be compelling and interesting. And that's all about the lifestyle. And that's all about the storytelling. That's all about like the getting to the other side of a painful experience or how, how people survive certain situations. And so if it's um, that story arc, that journey story is very important in, in a podcast, if you want to not just focus on tactical, but I think it's important to really build a show that combines the education, the entertainment and the tactical, because that's the piece where we can bring in the calls to action to drive people back to a website and learn more about working with you. So we wanna take into consideration all of these different elements and build a show that's sustainable. Yeah, I love I, I love everything that you shared. One thing that I I want to share I, I there's a, a a lawyer a personal injury lawyer he actually is not a law firm owner he's just an attorney but uh, I he I guess he you know he wants to bring in uh, business into the firm he has, he he benefits from doing so um, and his name is Morris Lilienthal I don't know if you've heard of him uh, but he has a show called the Mo Show and he started that in 2017 um, and he. Contrary to a lot of these ideas, he didn't start a show that has anything to do with law. He started a show that's just for the local community, and he interviews local lo lo pe local people like the councilmen and and city mayors and you know the board school board of directors and like stuff like that. Like he he brings people in that people want to they want to hear about the goings on in the community. He talks about. Yeah, uh, you know, events that are happening in the community. Um, and he actually like his real like getting getting known in, in within his area, uh, like how people found out about his show is he had the weatherman as a guest and the weatherman shared out on his social media that he was, you know, being a guest on the Mo Show. And who doesn't follow the weatherman? So um, everybody tuned in to the Mo Show. And that's, you know, so that's really what like put him on the map, so to speak. But what's interesting is, I mean, if you go and check it out, um, I just pulled up the website now just to kind of like it. And it's the Mo Show, M-O-S-H-O-W dot live. Um, but he's got like um, interviews, tips, podcasts, weekend work shirt. He's, you know, he, he does like these, these, um, hashtag weekend work shirt and he goes into the office on Saturdays and then he posts like what he, you know, what he's wearing to work when he goes to work on the weekends. And that kind of highlights him as like a, a person, an individual, um, and what, you know, and, and the fact that he's, you know, he, he works hard for his clients and he even goes in on the weekend when necessary. Um, but really cool stuff that he's doing um, within the community. And all that did is just made him a, a celebrity in the local area. But he gets to talk about what he does on every single show. 
Yeah, it's not absolutely. about law, but everyone who listens to the Mo Show knows that Marius Lilienthal is a personal injury attorney. So if anything happens and you think, oh, maybe I need a personal injury attorney, who are you calling? I mean, you want well, the think, celebrity. Right. You're Because that's going to be the name recognition that's going to come into play as a result of, of, in, of listening and being engaged in this podcast. So I'll take that strategy one step further for him. And he may already be doing this. I haven't listened to a show, but like, if we were working with him, the thing that I would recommend is you're already doing a great job. You're talking about content and things that people care about that you care about. So again, that energetic alignment is there. You're also um, being able to create a network to promote your podcast, i.e. the weatherman, all of those things, super smart. The other thing that you can do is that the way that podcasting, we, we like to refer to it as that's your oceanfront property, right? So it's your podcast, it's your brand. If you are doing a podcast where your content isn't directly tied back to your business model like he is, you have inventory within that show that you have control over. So you just run ads with the traditional radio model. You run ads for your own products and services inside your podcast. And then now all of a sudden you have a 360 degree comprehensive product that has entertainment value, education value, and you're ever, you're able to use that oceanfront property to market your own products and services, but your clients are, that find out about you through that, they're finding out about you through you're creating valuable content for them that's unrelated necessarily, but to your point, when they need you, or somebody they know might need you, you're gonna, they're gonna know of your products and services. And I think that that's one of the most critical thing we hear a lot. Well, how can I monetize my podcast? How can I monetize my podcast? And you mentioned that you're getting sponsors, which is a great way to, you know, again, use that traditional media model of selling sponsorships, having them be included in your podcast and all the other marketing initiatives that you have that you can bundle them into. But a lot of times it's overlooked that your podcast can actually be the place that you advertise your own products and services. And that's a really great way to monetize your show as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I love that. Um, now, I with because of the the time involved, I, I want to, there's three main things I wanted to cover. And the first was like, okay, so what kind of show do I have? And we, we, we covered that briefly, but we covered it. Um, the, the next thing I wanted to ask you about is, who is the host of the show? Like, who is the person behind the microphone? Um, we we always assume that it needs to be us, right? Um, but if we look around us at other mediums, you know, go to CBS Sports. You know, I'm a football fan, right? The people who are the hosts on the on the the podcast and the live TV shows and stuff like that of CBS Sports, it's not the CEO of CBS Sports. It's people that he's hired to be the talent um, on the show. Uh, you know, so one of the things that people tell me when, you know, if we if we talk about this possibility, uh, you know, for their marketing and their branding is, oh, I don't want to be behind the microphone or that's a big commitment of time for me, um, which, by the way, I uh, batch record my podcast and I spend one day a month. Um, and today's a recording day where you're, you're my fifth out of, out of six conversations today. Um, and it, we block the calendar and one day I spend recording and that's, that's enough. Not only is that enough to do, but it actually gives me enough inventory that I take the summer off. So I don't record during the summer. Um, so, you know, that argument of like, oh, I don't have enough time. I'm too busy really doesn't have to be that way. Like you can, you can strategically do this in a way that you can make it work. Um, but some people just don't want to be in the spotlight or they don't, they don't want to have to think about it or prep for it, or they just don't th think on their feet well, or they don't, they're not articulate, you know, like there's a lot of reasons why you may not want to be the host. So, um, I think that there's other ways to do this. And I, I want to just, you know, see from your experience, like, what are the pros, the cons of, uh, you know, should I be the one doing it or, or, or have somebody on my team do it or, um, which, which has its own risks, uh, or hire talent to do it. So, I mean, there's risks involved in, in it not being you because you don't own the other person. Um, but what are your thoughts on, on that whole conversation? 
Right. Well, I think it's a great conversation to have. And I think there are pros and cons to each scenario that you just listed out. If you are a business that is using your podcast to grow your business, we're going to encourage that as the CEO or the person who is the business owner have some presence in the podcast. At the same time, we're going to take into consideration your bandwidth and resources and everything that goes into planning and executing on that podcast. You have really great systems. I can tell just by talking to you, you've got, you've, you've really drilled this down and you have your, your systems in place to really support it, to be sustainable for you. Not everybody is going to be able to have that. So what we would initially look at first is Is there a possibility where we bring you in to record the intro of the podcast and then we have a talent or a team member go and and facilitate the generation of the remainder of the content? That's one solution around that where you may only have to record the intros once a month versus having to necessarily facilitate all of the interviews and things like that. That works really well for business owners who may not feel super comfortable behind the mic. They may not want to have the dialogue that's involved or the prep that's involved in an interview, but they're okay with just creating, you know, hi, this is Tracy DeForge, um, founder and CEO, producer podcast. Today's episode is going to be, and then, you know, do a little short intro like that, right? That's one way. Another way is to have the presence of the business owner, but be supported by a co-host. And The co-host can either be somebody who is consistently on the show with them all of the time, or they can be a rotating co-host. So in that way, it would be the host and friends or the host and the co-host. The really nice thing about having a co-host is that let's say, for example, you have this whole day blocked with six interviews, like you were mentioning. Well, what would happen if somebody was a no-show? You've already blocked your time. You already have this. Um, in you know, in our case, we record you with a live engineer in virtual studios, so you've already showed up um, for your recording session. If you have a co-host and you have a no-show on your guest, then you and your co-host can create an episode together that's um, still in the same format, the same content. And and then you have somebody that you have an accountability partner to as well. So that helps you be sustainable and keeping the podcast going. Then the third option um, would be that we build a show for you that is uh, has different segments. Think of a lifestyle magazine or like you were saying, CBS Sports or, or like an Entertainment Tonight where there's different portions of the show, you might be bringing in somebody from your marketing team to talk about marketing. For example, you might be bringing somebody in from the tech team to talk about technology. It really all depends on what the focus of the show is, but we can build it out so that you're not, they're not reliant upon you all the time for the entire content. And then the fourth option, which is like you mentioned, hiring talent. And we do get that request and we do um, do outreaches for talent. With business focused po- podcasting though, I will say nobody's going to know your business better than you. And if your ultimate goal is to generate leads and sales from your podcast, you want to build that relationship with your future client or customer. And the best way to do that is to hear them talk about you and how you run your business. So if you're a consultant or a coach, or you're, again, an, a, a divorce attorney, and someone's going through the, one of the most difficult challenges of their life, if they can hear how you sound and how you look in, in empathy, and they can, there's, there's nothing that can replicate authenticity that like your there's nothing that can replicate authenticity from your voice like how you engage with people how you talk to people how you empathize with people or how you in, motivate people that's all going to come through your voice and it's something that will be a good extension to conversion of people wanting to do business with you because there's so many choices now of of who to do business with your podcast can literally showcase why they would want to do business with you because they feel that like-minded connection to you. So we would want to craft and build a show where you have some presence in it, but whatever's going to be the most comfortable for you so that it's sustainable. Yeah, I love that. Um, I think there's one more way that we can insert the business owner in and still have somebody else run the show. Um, And that's to kind of like have like a little three to five minute snippet at the beginning of the show. 
where yeah, there's a the conversation. Yes. Yeah. But instead of them just saying this is the this is what the episode title is, right. um, there's there's more of, of a of like a Q topic a. or a conversation discussed. That's like the, the first item of business. And then it goes into the regular the regular show. Um, and that's and a great idea, because then you take that segment that we were talking about and you could repurpose that as a short form piece. And so then you get the best of both worlds where you have a full episode. There's a spotlight, if you will, from the business center. Uh, that's showcasing, again, their thought leadership, their subject matter expertise at the beginning. But then if you are releasing that as a shorter form episode, then someone can get that insight on that empathy and that enthusiasm and all of that expertise just by um, watching the video short or listening to the shorter episode. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Um, um, all right. So we've got what our show is going to be about um, at the format of the show. We've got who's going to be the host. Um, what does it take to produce it? What, and, and, and what are some ways that I told you in the, in the green room and I'll just repeat it for, for our, our listeners as a business coach, as somebody who is trying to help law firm owners grow, you, your time is so precious it is that you have to always think about whenever you're approached with a new idea, or something that you want to implement, you always have to approach it with the mindset of who's going to do this for me rather than how do I do this? Because we can have this whole conversation at the end. Tracy could say, here, go buy my course and I'm going to teach you how to run your podcast. Right. And there are people out there who are teaching how to do it. So you can go out and you can learn how to do it. But you know how much you know how much time you're going to spend doing it yourself. So, I want to approach this conversation from that lens of who's going to do this for me, not how do I do it. What are some ways that I can that that somebody who's sitting here listening to this conversation saying, "Wow, I really love podcasting. I I, I believe that this is the thing my firm needs." And by the way, one thing we didn't mention about a benefit of podcasting is we think of podcasting as like, this could be the lead in for business, but it can also be somebody comes to check your law firm out. They see you have a podcast because you have a tab on the top of your menu bar, like podcast, and they click on it and now they go and now they start listening and they, they dive into your world. So they were looking for legal services. And instead of clicking a the call, they're now listening to you for like six or seven episodes. They're like, oh, this is my attorney. This is who now they call you. It's like, you, you there's nothing to do other than where do I sign? So right. there's another there's another nuance of how this this podcast can really help you uh, acquire uh, uh, customers. Um, but when it comes to producing it, I mean, you 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 talked about some of the ways that you can repurpose the content. And for somebody who doesn't like for me, I we've got a whole system in place on our team and, right. and and everybody has their role and it just it works like clockwork because everyone knows what they need to do and they do it. I show up and I have conversations. I don't book the talent. I don't have the pre-calls. I don't make sure people are connected with me on social. I don't do the posting afterwards. None of that. I show up and I have a conversation. I leave. How can our listeners think about the podcast in a way that it sounds easy to do that, that they're not embarking on a journey where they're going to get derailed because I don't have the time. Right. I think that's, I think this is a very important thing to address because a lot of times people will think about doing a podcast and never do it. We've had people who have thought about doing a podcast, ordered the equipment, never took it out of the box and got just you know the overwhelm in this is is can be really powerful uh so i'll just answer your question by sharing my own personal experience so when i decided to launch my own podcast which was my first podcast was um in 2016 i knew that i had a very um, vibrant very busy consulting business at the time and was working with Fortune 500 companies, I really didn't want to take my focus off of my consulting business, but I really knew and understood the benefits of podcasting. So I actually pulled a team together on my own at that point in time. Um, there weren't as many um, easily accessible recording services and things like that. We honed a technology from the UK to record guests virtually. 
we built this, I built this whole team to launch my own show because I knew if left to my own devices as a busy business owner, I may get one off the ground, but keeping it active was never going to happen. So once I launched my first podcast, that's when I really realized, you know, there are going to be a lot of other business owners, CEOs, coaches, consultants, authors that are going to want a service like this because maybe you're a solopreneur and you don't have a full team. So that's when I built Producer Podcast to basically do soup to nuts from strategy to production and then create all of that marketing and distribution assets like newsletters and graphics and uploading to the distribution platforms and everything. I built Producer Podcast for people like me because I knew that there were a lot of other people like me. It's funny you mentioned that about a course. Um, Producer Podcast has been in business for eight years. We've produced over 100 plus clients with uh, uh, 15, 20,000 episodes. Our average client retention is three plus years because we do everything for them. I've never released a course that's downloadable. I've never done anything like that because I don't believe in them. I believe in being able to provide white glove tactical support for people who need it in a very affordable way because that's the other thing to take into consideration. There are budget limitations. You you might not have the budget of a Charles Schwab or a Trader Joe's to produce a podcast in, in that arena, but you can get just a good of quality show by having someone else support you in doing it. And it also is very important to work with somebody who understands the difference between producing a lifestyle armchair expert or, you know, type of entertainment value podcast versus producing a business focused podcast, because they're two totally different strategies. So you do want to look at looking and working with the right partner, having a partner that can service you not only just to edit your show, but maybe again, having that accountability of showing up to a studio virtually, like we're recording right now, but having that set on your schedule and then having that edited for you and all of those marketing pieces created for you, there's so much value in that because it gets done and you never have to worry about it. Um, the other thing that's important too is, and I'm, as you can tell, I'm better at stories. So we have a client, her name is Mae Harris, and she owns a, a, a law group called For Purpose Law Group, where she focuses specifically on nonprofit uh, in terms of working and engaging with nonprofit, but she wanted to help the um, people who might want to start a nonprofit, but they may not have the budget to hire her firm. So she wrote a book and then we worked with her and we launched her whole show. And so now she has the nonprofit council podcast. It's a complete extension of her business, but it serves her. She doesn't have to worry about a thing, but just showing up and recording but she has now this ability to use it to promote the four purpose law group. In addition, she does have a course and a book that if you wanted to DIY it, you know where to go, right? So again, that podcast is such a multifaceted resource tool and business growth tool for her, but she doesn't have to do anything, but just focus on creating great content, which is what she does. Yeah, I love that. And I love the the model of of uh, you know having it done for you, soup for soup to nuts. Um, and I know that there's different, probably different options that people can choose when they do it. But can you give us and and I know I'm putting you on the spot by asking this question, oh, and and we're also about to wrap up. So this is gonna be the last question, and then we'll do our closing out of the show. Um, but what kind of budget should somebody expect to invest? Um, to produce, you know, to have a show produced for them if, if they're going to be their own host. So uh, they're, they're the talent. They're just coming to you to, to you know, to produce the show and, and, and everything that goes with it. Well, I'm going to talk first about the criteria that goes into the pricing because the things that, because you're, because if you, you're going to be shopping other, you know, prices, they can be all over the place. So what you really want to make sure is that you're looking at something apples to apples. And the things to take into consideration are, are you recording an audio and video? Because video is more expensive to edit. Are you going to um, have episodes that are up to 30 minutes? Or are they going to be longer than 30 minutes? Because the length of the episode and benefit from recording with the live engineer, which we highly recommend because they can do a sound check with you and your guest at the, before you start recording. You don't have to worry about if your internet goes out or if the technology situations happen that engineers virtually in the studio with you. 
Or are you just going to record on your own and then send the raw files to be edited? Because that can affect the price. And then the other thing is defining full service. So full service for us starts with recording with the engineer, then editing, and then creating all of the marketing assets, which could be the graphics, a newsletter, sending an email out to the guests with all the sharing information, writing the show notes, uploading it to the website, just doing all of the things. So if you're going at the that premium level of having everything done for you, then you're looking at anywhere um, between in just ballpark range, but they're pretty solid ranges for audio and video. You're looking at anywhere between a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars an episode for everything all inclusive. But then you, the price then can be reduced from that based on if you don't need all of those deliverables that I just mentioned. And you also want to look at, um, and and then produce your podcast. We're not the most expensive. We're not the least expensive. We're a really good, solid, medium price range for the level of services that we provide. You can, I mean, spend upwards of five, six thousand dollars an episode, up to ten, twenty thousand dollars an episode, depending on the production values and all of the things. Um, you can also sub it out on freelance um, gig economy sites like Fiverr and things like that, you're going to end up having to pull a, still pull a team together. So one of the advantages is really like for your time and your resources with us, you work with one client manager that handles everything. So you're only having to interface with one person and that's including them scheduling your recording episodes and creating and getting all your assets to you for approval and then uploading and distributing them. So we've designed a very flawless workflow that that we're doing all of the heavy lifting. And so again, it depends also on how often you release. So on a cost per episode basis, if you budget for one, one a month, two a month, or every week, the top loaded downloads release every week. So you might be looking at a, you know, three to four to $5,000 a month um, budget but then you're getting all of this content that you can repurpose. You're getting pre-written social media posts. You're getting hashtags sourced. You're getting newsletters done. You're getting emails sent out on your behalf. So it's a lot for, I think, a very affordable investment when you're looking at not only are you having the audio and video podcast recorded and edited for you, but you're also having all this other opportunities to have this content repurposed and it's being done for you. I love it. And um, we are out of time. I (laughs) got to wrap it up here. Uh, I like to close out the show with uh, two things. Number one, one parting piece of advice or wisdom you'd like to share with our audience. Number two, how can they find out more about you, um, get in touch with you, take next steps, um, and um, maybe get their show started? Well, one of my most favorite pieces of advice, no matter if you're thinking about a podcast or just building a business and you're, you're trying to grow your firm is just to be really mindful to start where you are. And, you know, that whole idea of comparison is the thief of joy. Don't start out thinking I'm never going to have a million downloads an episode like Joe Rogan, just start where you are, because even if you have two, 300 um, downloads on your business focused podcast, that's a lot of people for you to generate future business from. And so it doesn't take a whole lot of downloads to really convert that into visibility leads and sales. So just start where you are, start where you are with the show, start where you are, you know, find the right partner, but just get started because every day that you wait is a missed opportunity. So I just say, start where you are in any area that you're thinking about jumping into any area of business growth. And then in terms of getting in touch with us, I would love to connect with you. And the best way to do that is to go to produceyourpodcast.com. There's places that you can book a free call. You can fill out uh, information on the contact form, but just visit our website, produceyourpodcast.com. And you're going to see examples of the the really great um, f- podcast that we talked about today, the lawyer podcasts and the law firm podcasts that we talked today are all featured on the site. So if any of these stories that I shared with you interest you, you can find out more about their shows on producerpodcast.com. Yeah, I love um, I love the 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 artwork on some of these shows. I mean, uh, you guys do a really, really good, do- good job. I haven't listened to any of the shows, but I'm on your website t- checking it out. And um, 
really some some of it is really eye catching and um I know uh, I'm a profit first professional and big fan of Mike Michalowicz. Uh, I'm, I'm about, I live about 30 minutes from him. I see him all the time. I see a profit first nation podcast on there um, with uh, Danielle Mulvey. So uh, really cool stuff. Um, uh, folks, check it out. We'll link it up in the show notes. And if you didn't know, um, every episode has uh, a blog post behind it, but also all the resources that we share are linked up in the show notes. You can find it in the description of your podcast player or at profitwithlaw.com. If you go to profitwithlaw.com there, you'll find out how to book a call with our team and find out how we can help you. It's not a sales call. So um, you basically book a 15 minute call and our team learns more about your firm, learns about your goals and learns about your challenges. And then guess what? They're going to give you some free resources. They're going to point you to some podcast episodes, some YouTube videos, some stuff that we've done in the past that will help you take the next step in your journey. And yeah, we'll want to book a second call with you and perhaps pitch you some services. But the first call is absolutely pitch free. Uh, book that call at profitwithlaw.com. We'd love to have a conversation with you. Uh, if this is your first time listening to the show, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you get notified every time we release a new episode. And we are here every single week, Thursday mornings. We release that new episode for you. Uh, so stay tuned next Thursday for another amazing interview. And of course, Tracy, great conversation, really amazing guest. Thank you so much for being here. And we look forward to uh, other opportunities to collaborate. Uh, really love what you're doing. Uh, and folks, if podcasting is for you, definitely uh, give Tracy a look. I don't offer this as a service, but I think it's genius to pay for it to be done for you and not try to figure it all out. Um, unless you have the team to do it, you know, if, if you have enough employees and you have the right people in place, you absolutely can do this yourself. But uh, love the idea of going to Tracy and having exploring that possibility with her and her team. Take care. We'll see you next week. Thank you.